So today, we're going to go over a few things. I've added quite a bit to this game since last tutorial, uh, but we're going to mainly focus on placing books randomly throughout the level. Uh, I've also added some interaction with the books. You answer a basic question. Uh, mostly added that for my daughter that likes to play games that I make. But anyway, we're going to... Maybe I'll do that in, an, in another tutorial, but uh, today we'll focus on how we place randomly throughout the dungeon. Now the first thing you'll notice is I have a brand new script called Globals, and you'll want to make an uh, auto-load script for this. So you just make a new script, and then go to the project settings, and upload it here. That way you can access it from all the scripts. Now a singleton isn't actually connected to any particular node, it's just connected to the whole project and it's loaded first which is important because we want to put functions and variables in it that we will use in the other scripts. So I guess I should also point out that I I did add a book container here uh, we'll, like I said, the question scene and stuff we'll look at some other time, but today we're just going to look at the, the book container and this globals script. So I pretty much have a globals.gd in almost every single one of my games that I have, and this is where we kind of uh, branch away from the idea that I was talking about in my previous videos of how you want to keep everything separate. The globals is kind of a connect everything type of script. Uh, it's still nice to keep uh, like the, the map and the player and all the logic inside of those separate, uh, that you're not controlling the player through the map uh, script or the map through the player script or something like that, but you do have to eventually connect things together and globals or singletons are a great way to do that. Now one of the first things that you'll see up here is I absolutely hate writing paths for nodes and doing relative paths or hard-coded paths. So I actually just make a singleton. I make a variable for each one I want to keep track of. So this, the map will be my tile map. Uh, the game node is the root node and uh, the question screen. And when I load like the game script, I just add globals dot game node equals self and that will function the same as actually writing out the path because like I said I just hate writing those uh, and so this might not be a great practice or I guess standard practice of how you do this but it's just how I do it because I'm willing to cut a little bit of corners when it comes to not having to write paths and rewrite paths so then we just have a scene here. The important thing is it's just an area 2D that has a signal when a body entered it. And we'll go over the logic of that. You can make it do whatever you want. You could just have it be gold that you pick up or just you want to pick up a certain amount of books and keep track of them. Uh, but like I said, we'll go over the letter question scene later. Maybe I'll change it to something else. Uh, but going back to the globals, uh, we have, I've moved a few of the variables into the globals that were in all of the map and also some of the player, the script and the game script, such as the tiles and the tile size and open spaces. Uh, you do have to go back through and change all of those and put a global dot in front of all of them, but there's not too many of them and you can also use the search and find or replace to help you do it quickly. It doesn't really take that long. It's better to do it now than later when you have a whole bunch more scripts to dig through. So I also moved the find open spaces to the singleton because all of the maps had this function. And really the only thing I changed was we have to have an argument in here. Uh, since the map size changes, uh, mainly because of the chunk map, I added a variable in there that when you call the function, which you'll have to have this in all the ready uh, functions of all the maps that you use, 
a globals.find open spaces and then like I said we'll send that that uh, variable at that time and then since we're looking at it right now right after that we're going to place randomly the book uh, we're gonna pass a string of the name which I'll explain in a second and just how many books we actually want to spawn we'll probably turn that into a variable later but for now 10 works and when you look at this place randomly like we said there are three arguments the first one's the item that'll be the preloaded scene and then the item name is so I can put it in the appropriate container and then we'll see how many times we want to go through the loop to place how many items it says now the reason why I'm using item opposed to books is I'm trying to make this so that I can use this function to place any item that I want whether it be gold or enemies or books and so I'm tr we'll see if it works when I make my next one my next item or uh, enemy that I want to place but we're gonna have different ways of placing things uh, and this is gonna be just the random way to place things and I'm hoping it works for multiple types of scenes so there's a lot going on here but the basic idea is that we just make an instance of the scene an instance of the scene and then we add it to the game node now everything else in between is actually keeping track of the open spaces and also making sure that we get it to the right container. So the reason why there's so much extra stuff in here is I decided I didn't want the items to overlap so we made our open spaces array up here and I want to every time we uh, replace a book or an item I, I want to remove that from the array so we don't have books overlapping or player overlapping it when we start because it's kind of awkward to have the player start on a book and instantly open to a question screen uh, so one of the there's two ideas here uh, the first one is it's not a good idea to change an array while you're looping through it so since we're in the middle of uh, this open spaces uh, you don't want to be changing it while you're looking in it if that makes sense because then it can cause problems and, and errors when you accidentally randomly look at the same spot twice uh, be and it just gets confused when it's all in the same frame so what you do is you make an additional array and you go through all of your loops while adding all the ones you want to remove to that array and then when you're done you'll erase them all from the open spaces so that's what's going on here uh, we for how many times we want to have the item we will make an instance and if open spaces isn't to zero that's just a check to make sure it doesn't crash because uh, I'll have a divide by zero if it if, if it's empty this is a while loop if this is just a grandiose way of saying like saying if I picked the same place twice try again so every time I have a while loop I like to have an iterations just to make sure it doesn't loop forever now it'd be pretty crazy for it to loop a lot of times in this instance but it's just how I like to write my code to make sure that it doesn't ever infinitely loop it will only do 50 times which would be insane in itself to actually happen that many times but we pick a random space and if I've already picked that space and put it into my we want to remove I've already placed a book there then I want to pick a new space and then we'll keep going until we get a fresh space uh, and then we will add it to the remove uh, array this will be the position that we will put the book in this is the container that we're looking for and so this is why I had the the scene and then also a string I want to have book plus container and then I will get the game node like I said I used up here to get the container 
and add the child to that specific container. And then when you're all done with all of that code, you have to remember to actually remove the positions that are in this array from the official open spaces array. I have this commented out here. This is another way to basically say exactly the same thing as right here. Instead of using the game node, if you don't like the way that I do that with the variable, I also use my get tree get nodes in group trick. Uh, I added the game node to the game group and you can just use that instead of using this hard-coded game node from up here.